Welcome to the Old Tom Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, uh, uh, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, with a special edition. I know I said we were going to go ahead and we would find out what happened next next week, but since Laser and Sword Magazine, we have uh, now launched two series being posted on the... uh, on the website where you can actually read our two new serial stories uh, at lasersword.adamsweb.us right on our blog and we will be posting weekly updates every Monday we will have a new uh, chapter in the Order of the Sword series and every Thursday we will have a new chapter in the Rise of the Judge series so go to lasersword.adamsweb.us but as a special uh, happy one year anniversary to us. This is the first uh, one year since we began uh, doing this show. Uh, and as well, a special thank you and celebration of our new uh, st- uh, way of uh, publishing these uh, stories. We are going to go ahead and provide you not one but two episodes of the Old Tom Radio Superman show this weekend. So if you like that, you appreciate that, you appreciate the show, please cast your vote for us at Podcast Alley. Also, uh, please feel free to drop me an email, adam at adamsweb.us. But without any further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into uh, the Yellow Mask and the $5 million jewel robbery, Part 8. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look, it's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from another world whose physical powers are far beyond those of mortal men, and who wages a never-ending battle against crime and oppression, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Puzzled by the uncanny disappearance of five huge transport planes, all of which were carrying collections of precious gems to the National Jewelry Exposition, Kent and young Jimmy Olsen, copy boy on the paper, found their way to a 30-story abandoned skyscraper, the Parkway Tower, located on a weed-grown field a mile from the airport. As they neared the entrance, a young woman whom they had met before in connection with the stolen jewels came out carrying a suitcase. Kent stopped her, but she drew a gun, warned him not to move and vanished into the fog-bound night. Leaving Jimmy behind, Kent followed her and snatched her gun away. Frightened, she turned and ran. Suddenly, a scream knifed out of the darkness, and the girl disappeared before Superman's amazed eyes. Listen. She's gone. Vanished. Not a sign of her out here. What's that? Wait, Scott, there she is. Caught in a huge quicksand hole. Dragging her down. Don't struggle. I'll get you out. Thinking fast. No wonder. That's terrific. Hope I can get out myself. Got a few feet. There. I've got her. Ah, she fainted. Got to work my way back to solid earth. Won't be easy. I need all my strength. Getting there. Slowly. Now. Ah, made it. But not by much. Mr. Kent, where are you? I can't let Jimmy see me as Superman. Not at a time like this. Might put two and two together. I'll change back to Kent. Right here, Jimmy. Be careful. You heard a scream, Mr. Kent, and... See that big hole in the ground? It's full of quicksand. She stumbled into it and almost sank before I could get her off. Is she hurt? Oh. Stand back a little, Jimmy. Uh, Give her air. Oh, I see. Quicksand. You're safe now. Get out of it. Fell into it. Yes, I know you fell into it. I heard you scream. You saved my life. After I pulled a gun on you. No, forget it. You should have let me think of it then. I'm no good. She's no good. Now, oh, come on, come on. Pull yourself together. You can be of great help to us. I'll do anything you say, anything. Well, then tell us. Where's the yellow mask? In that building, the Parkway Tower. That's his headquarters. I locked him in a room on the 10th floor. The only other people in the building are a watchman and a radio operator. Radio operator? Well, that's how we made those transport planes disappear. They're sending out false radio beams. Where are the planes? Buried in that cushion. They followed the beam and that's where it led. I mean, the planes 
The people in them were buried alive in that quicksand? Yes, that's what he told me. But before the plane sank, his men took the jewels off them. Are you telling me the truth? I swear it's the truth. Well, look in that suitcase. You'll find all the jewels. When the mask showed them to me, I pulled a gun on him and took them. Where is the suitcase? I dropped it when I ran away from you. See if you can find it in the grass, Jimmy. Okay. You feel all right now, miss? Yes, it's okay. I hear. It's awful heavy, though. Good boy. Sit her down here. We'll open it. All right. What? There are all the jewels. I took everything he had in the safe. They're worth millions. Well, what we got to do is get the yellow mask. Well, it's not that simple, Jimmy. Hmm? All we have is Miss... Uh, My uh, name's Lorimer. Chicky Lorimer. All we have is Miss Lorimer's word against the yellow mask. And I don't think it's enough to hold up in court. This time we've got to be right and put the mask behind bars for life. Yeah, but how? Slippery as a meal. Well, even eels can be lured into traps. You still want to help us, Miss Lorimer? I told you I would. All right. Now, the first thing to do is to get back to the city with these jewels. Then we'll figure out a trap for the yellow man. A trap strong enough to hold him. Here, I'll take the suitcase to me. You help us, Lorimer. Okay, Mr. Kent. Where are we headed? Back to the airport. That's where we parked our car. Just follow me. Good evening, radio fans. This is Bill Breen with some hot news for you. Chicky Lama, alleged queen of a billion-dollar jewel ring, still refuses to tell police where she hid a fortune in precious gems stolen from the National Exposition. The young woman now being held in city prison says she won't talk. Police Commissioner's office. Commissioner, this is Evans, National News Service. What about that Lorimer girl? Are we getting the true story? Of course you are. Well, it sounds fishy to me. Well, that's just too bad. Goodbye. Kent, we can't keep this up much longer. The papers and news services are beginning to smell a rat. All I ask is another 24 hours, Commissioner. If the yellow mask doesn't bite by then, I'll step out. All right, but I don't like it. What do you think the papers would say if they knew we had the jewels and weren't returning them to their rightful owners? Something's going to break tonight, Commissioner. I've got a feeling it will. Well, I hope so, Kent. Because I'm in a spot now. This yellow mask you keep talking about. What if he doesn't exist? Oh, I can assure you he does. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to wager that at this very moment he's plotting to get his hands on those missing jewels. And that's just what we're waiting for. You sent for me, Chief? Yes. Close the door. I've got a job for you, Lefty. A dangerous job. Ah, you know me, Chief. Nothing's too tough if there's dough in it. Five hundred dollars, Lefty. Why, Chief, for five seas, I'd steal a battleship. With half the Navy on it. I don't want any battleships. But listen closely. There's a girl being held in the city prison. Yeah, I heard about her over the radio. Cut the load of ice, didn't she? She walked out of here carrying fifteen million dollars worth of precious gems. Ah, that ain't hay. Where'd she get the haul? Never mind that. I want that girl brought to me. You mean I, I got to fling her out of the job? Exactly. And for performing that little service, you will be paid $500 on delivery. Well, I, I don't know, Chief. Springing a dame out of that hoose cow ain't no pipe. I thought you said no job was too tough for you as long as there was money in it. Well, yeah, I know, but maybe I'll have to grease the skids. Maybe I'll have to pay off a couple guys. Uh, how about making it a grand? thousand dollars? Well, that ain't too much. Not for this kind of job. You guarantee to get her out tonight? Sure, sure. Where do I take her? You want me to bring her here? No. I've got a little place about 20 miles from the city. I'll tell you how to get there. But first, there's another little matter that you and your friends will have to attend to. Yeah, what is it? You may be followed. In case you are, I have a plan for getting rid of whoever follows you. Okay, but first let me call a couple of guys and get them set. Go ahead. There's the phone. These guys know their stuff. Getting pretty late, Kent. And nothing's happened yet. Don't worry, Commissioner. It'll break soon. You know, Kent, I still don't get the point behind all this. For instance, why is that girl reporter sitting in a cell in the city prison instead of Chicky Lorimer? Because I can trust Lois Lane... And I'm not certain I can trust the Lorimer girl. Lois is one of the best reporters on the Daily Planet, and she's not afraid of anything. But you said the yellow mask knows the Lorimer girl. Well, that won't matter. You see, this is how I figure it to happen. 
The mask must have read in the papers or heard over the radio that the police are holding Chicky Lorm. But she won't tell where the jewels are hidden. And actually, he figures if his men can bring him the girl, he can force her to reveal the hiding place. Well, what if they do break her out? I, I mean, Miss Lane. I'll follow them in my car, just to see that nothing happens. Lois has full instructions. She knows what to do. i better send a police detail along with you, Kent. Now, that won't be necessary, Commissioner. I'm taking young Jimmy Olsen. He's been on this case from the beginning and wants to see it through. He's waiting outside in the car. Excuse me. Commissioner's office. Yes, Cassidy. What? You sure? All right. Handle it just as I ordered. You were right, Kent. A man has just applied at the prison for permission to talk to Chicky Lorne. Says he's her brother. Come on. We can watch what happens from the front window. Prison's across the street. Here, sit down. Oh, thanks. Does the warden know what he's to do? Yes. No resistance. Let them take the girl. Good. Ah, oh, that must be their car in front of the prison. Big black sedan. Motor's running. Kent. Look. Uh, they've got her. They're coming through the gate. That means I've got to get going. See you later, Commissioner. Okay, Joe. Pull up on the other side of the bridge. I don't know if we're being tail or not, but I ain't taking no chances. I'll be right back, Joe. I got some business with the guy that runs this bridge. Okay, Pop. Open the bridge. What do you mean? I said open the bridge and don't stall. But, but you can't... Open it before I let you have it. That's the ticket, Pop. That's just against the law, so... Yeah, it's... no kidding. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing now? The signal lights. They've got to be changed from green to red. No, they don't. I want them to stay green. All right, turn around. Yeah, this rope will fix you up good. All right, get down on your belly. Hey, you can't do this now. Get down. A couple of turns around your ankles and your are shut. So long, Pop. Come back. Come back, you. All right, get going, Joe. They've got a fast car, but we're stepping right along. What's that green light up ahead? Oh, it's the signal light on the drawbridge. Oh. When the light's green, that means the bridge is closed. I'd better get over it before some boat comes along the river and the bridge opens. Here we go, Jimmy. Yes, there they go at better than a mile a minute, hurtling through the darkness over a drawbridge that shows a green light, but is wide open with only the deep, swirling river below. What will happen? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Magazine. All right, welcome back. Well, uh, you you have to wonder at the police at the police commissioner, uh, you know, when Clark, you know, he said uh, we need to send a uh, we need to send a police detail. Oh, no need for a police detail. I've got a fourteen year old kid with me, and that kind of went over. Okay, but. But this is, um, but yeah, this is quite a, um, uh, th- uh, th- this is, this is quite a predicament here heading to the bridge. Uh, again, a lot of this is just made harder by Superman's, uh, uh or Clark Kent's desire to hide his secret identity. But we don't have to wait a few days. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and we will go ahead and show you what happens in part nine. So here's part nine and we'll come back. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton who has come to Earth with physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and oppression, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan paper. 
When Kent captured the mystery girl, Chicky Lorimer, with a fortune in stolen jewelry she had taken from the yellow mask, he realized it was an opportunity to lure the mask into a trap that would place him behind bars for life. With the cooperation of the police commissioner, the story went out that the jewels had not been recovered and that Chicky Lorimer refused to tell where they were hidden. Certain the mask would attempt to get Chicky Lorimer out of the city prison where it was reported she was being held. Kent arranged for his paper's star girl reporter, Lois Lane, to take her place. Sure enough, the masked henchman freed Lois from her cell at gunpoint, sped away in a car with Kent and young Jimmy Olsen trailing them. As our story continues today, Kent's car is approaching a drawbridge. The green go-ahead signal is on, but unknown to either Kent or Jimmy, the masked hired desperados have tied up the bridge watchman, opened the draw, and left the green light burning. Listen. And you better slow down going over the bridge, Mr. Kent. We can't afford to slow down, Jimmy. They're about a mile ahead of us now. We don't want to lose them. Help you sit tight. This car holds the road. Are you sure that green light means we can go ahead, that the drawbridge is closed? That's right. When it's red, the drawbridge is open. Say, is this the kind of a bridge that breaks in the middle and swings up on both sides and it both through? No, the whole bridge doesn't swing up. Just about 15 feet on either side. Oh. Now, hold on. We're almost to it. Boy, look at your long tires, huh? Yeah, they should. We're doing 65. Mr. Kent, look. The bridge is open. Oh, I can't hold her. She's kidding. We're going for the wall, Mr. Kent. <laughs> Flashing through the iron guardrail, the car plunges to the swirling river below with Kent and Jimmy trapped behind its closed doors. For a moment it bobs like a giant black cork on the angry water, then sinks beneath the surface. In the meantime, another car pulls into the driveway of a tree-shaded house where dim lights flicker behind drawn window shades. Okay, sister. Last stop. Get out. You still don't believe me, do you? How many times do I have to tell you I'm not Chicky Lorimer? Ah, stow it, sister, stow it. Come on, come on, up them steps. Hey, stick with the car, Joe. I'll be out as soon as I collect. Okay. Well, you're going to look like an awful dope bringing in the wrong girl. Ah, listen, don't make me laugh, sister. I got chat lips. What did you do when you stopped at that drawbridge? Oh, I just opened up the drawer in case he was being tailed. Hey, why don't someone answer here? Who is it? Me, Chief. Lefty. I got the tame. Open up. Come in. Quickly. All right. Go ahead, sister. Well, here she is, Chief. Just like I promised. You fool. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> This isn't the girl. I told him, but he wouldn't listen. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm getting played for a sucker. Didn't you say you wanted Chicky Lorimer? Well, that's her. I am not. My name's Helen Taylor. Oh, now, don't listen to her, Chief. She's been pulling that line all the way out. No, no. Just... This isn't the girl I want. Well, that ain't my fault. You asked for Chicky Lorimer, and you got Chicky Lorimer. Uh, maybe I can explain this mix-up. Ah, who asked you? Let her talk, Lefty. How can you explain it? I was in the same cell with the girl you want, Chicky Lorimer. They nabbed me for shoplifting. I guess the guard made a mistake when he came for Lorimer. Took me instead. Told this half-wit I wasn't the girl he wanted, but he wouldn't listen. Who's a half-wit? Now, keep quiet, Hefty. You've done enough bungy. Well, what about my grand? We'll attend to that later. So, young lady, you were in Chicky Lorimer's cell. Did you discuss anything with her? Who wants to know? I do. You the yellow mask? What made you ask that? Um, Chicky gave me a message for the yellow mask. In case I got out before she did. A message? What kind of a message? Well, it's personal. Wait outside, Lefty. All right, I don't know. No, Miss uh, Taylor. Helen Taylor. No, Miss Taylor. What was the message? Are you the yellow mask? Yes, I am. It's about the jewels. Yes, yes. 
Kitty said to tell you she was sorry she pulled that trick on you when she took the jewels. Yes, but where are they? I'm coming to that. Give me a chance. She said the cops didn't get the jewels. I knew that, but where are they? Where did she hide them? The suitcase is hidden under a bush in the field near the Parkway Tower. She described it to me so I could show you how to find it. Excellent. We'll leave at once and pick it up. And I shall see to it that you're rewarded handsomely, Steve. Oh, that's all right. Um, say, have you got a phone here? I'd like to call my sister and tell her I'm out of jail. A phone? Certainly. In the room at the head of the stairs. Over there. Go right ahead. I'll wait for you here. Thanks. Only take me a minute. Quiet. Come in. Tell me. What happened at the city priest? It was a cinch. I told him I was the Laura Madame's brother and wanted to talk to her. They brought her out. I pulled the gap. Nobody made a move. It was a pipe. Uh, they let you walk out of there. Nobody stopped you. I right? tell you, I strolled out of there like I was walking in the Easter Parade. There's something wrong here, Lefty. Stay where you are while I listen in on this telephone extension. Hello. Hello, is this me, Ted Gordy? Yes. Lord All right, hold on a minute. Lois Lane. I thought she looked familiar. You were right, Lefty, when you said that you were being played for a sucker. They're trying to play us both for suckers. But the game isn't over. Not by a long shot. In fact, Lefty, it has just begun. We were lucky to get another car to drive back in, Jimmy. One that fell in the river wasn't much good. I still don't know how we got out of it alive, Mr. Kent. I don't remember anything that happened after the car came off the bridge. Why, you bumped your head on the steering wheel. But how did you get the door open underneath the water? Why, uh, it, it flew open by itself. Oh. And you think it was the yellow mask who fixed the drawbridge? Well, you heard what the watchman said. If it wasn't the mask, it was one of his men. Well, why didn't we go and look for them instead of coming back to town? Because we didn't know where to look. Oh, Anyway, if Lois followed instructions, and I'm sure she did, the mask will walk into the trap we set for him. We'll stop off here at police headquarters and see Commissioner Malone. There we are. All right, come on, Jimmy. All right. Isn't that the Commissioner coming out? Huh? What? Yes, you're right. Uh, Commissioner Malone! Yes. Well, what are you doing here? I thought you followed Miss Lane and those men. Well, we did, Commissioner, until they stopped us by leaving a drawbridge open. Jimmy and I came close to having a serious accident. I heard you could tell me about it later. Miss Lane called. I don't know how she managed to get to a phone, but she did. We're on our way to the Parkway Tower Field right now. Uh, Is uh, everything all right? So she said. Evidently, the mask fell for her story. Good. He's going to the field to pick up the suitcase full of jewels? Yep. She'll be with it. Ah, it's working out just as we planned it. All right, uh, Jimmy and I'll follow you, Commissioner. No, no, you come along with me. Plenty of room in my car. But, Ken, yes? don't you think the boy would be better off remaining behind? You mean? Oh, gee, don't leave me out of it now. No, he'll be all right, Commissioner. Oh, uh, I suppose so. I've planted 50 men around the field. Good. Well, let's get going. Kent? If this little scheme of yours works, we'll have the mask dead to rights with the goods. Step on it, Parker. When you're near the field, dim your light. Crouched in the darkness, Kent, Commissioner Malone, and Jimmy Olsen wait for the yellow mask to walk into the trap. A trap baited with an empty suitcase. While hidden in the tall grass surrounding the field are 50 trained men of the homicide squad. On the alert, guns drawn, ready to close in on the most dangerous criminal at large. As the minutes go by, Kent and the police commissioner converse in hot people. He should have been here by now, Kent. The plane should have been leaving at once. But it would take less than an hour. He'll show up. Keep your eye on the road, Jimmy. If you see a car stop, let me know. Okay, Mr. Kent. Hey, uh... Lois didn't tell you where she was calling from, did she, Commissioner? No. She seemed to be here. I'm in a hurry. Uh-huh. I must say I admire her courage. From what you tell me, the yellow man is nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's half mad. Drunk with lust of power. Mr. Kent, 
Are you a cop? That's a plane. See it in the east? You can just make out a swing line. Uh, probably a transport coming into the airfield. No, it hasn't enough wind spread for a transport. Keep your eyes on the road, Jimmy. Oh, why is it that? That plane is coming in for a landing. Looks like a private job. I hope he doesn't think he can land in this field. No, no, he'll level off and slide into the airport. He's got his searchlights on now. He's not going into the airport. He's diving straight at us. No, Ken. He can't be. He is. Is the yellow mask at the controls of the roaring plane that came diving out of the night? If he is, what vengeance does he plan to take against those who set a trap for him? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Welcome back. Well, I'm glad in one way that the mask caught on to the scheme. Yes, it adds some danger to the story, but, you know, he's been a quite interesting villain in this whole whole story. And I think that he deserves a better fate than just stupiding himself um, to death. Uh, which is sadly where we said, can I use the phone? Oh, sure. Um, and not a clue until uh, additional information came. But we've got enough to keep us going a little while. And so we will be back. Uh, we will be back on Sunday with part 10. So everybody, I encourage you to have a happy U uh, new year. Again, get over to Laser Sword, Mag Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us to check out our new productions, um, as well as go to lulu.com slash lasersword to pick up the, uh, to uh, purchase some of our fine, uh, our fine products. But for now, I thank everybody so much for listening. This is Adam Graham, signing off.